Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about the Hopkins statistic. It's from a paper written by Hopkins and Skellum from 1954. And it's said to measure cluster tendency. Are there clusters in the data? But I think this is not exactly what it does. I think it's better understood as comparing uh, the data that you have to both a uniform distribution and a grid of points. So I want to show you the Hopkins statistic that I calculated on a bunch of two-dimensional data. So here where I have some data, it's obviously separated into five clusters and I get a pretty high Hopkins statistic. It's a measure from zero to one. Hopkins statistic is a measure between zero and one. Here the data is a bit less distinctly separated. I get a lower H. Here the data is uniformly distributed. I get an H close to 0 0.5. And here the data is in the form of a grid and I get an H of 0 0.13. Now you might think, oh, that's great, but look at this data over here. Here, all the data here is sampled from the same normal distribution. So this is actually just one cluster and we get a pretty high Hopkins statistics. Same for here, all the data here is sampled from some distribution that creates this ring and I get a pretty high Hopkins statistics of 0 0.99. So I think it's better understood as distincting different patterns from a uniform distribution and from a very strict structure such as a grid. Now, is it useful? Well, it doesn't detect different clusters. It doesn't say how many clusters exist. It doesn't really distinct between a Gaussian mixture model of one Gaussian or of 20 Gaussians. But again, it does give some indication if there is some clusters or patterns in the data as opposed to a uniform distribution or a grid. Now let's talk about how you calculate the Hopkins statistics. You need to calculate two different quantities. The first is you sample some number of points and dash points from your data and measure their distance to the closest data point. Then you take that distance and you take it to the power of D where D is the dimension of your data. So if your dimension is two, you take W to the power of two, but if you have higher dimension data, you will take it to a higher dimension. And then you sum all of this up and we'll call this W. Then you sample N dash points, the same number of points uniformly from the hypercube that encompasses your data. And again, you measure the distance to the closest data point, you exponentiate it and you sum it and we'll call it U. And then the Hopkins statistics is just U divided by U plus W. And of course here, the little U refers to the individual sample distance, as well as the little W refers to the sample distance and the capital W and the capital U refers to the sum over all the N dash points. And this statistic under the null assumption that the data distributes uniformly has a beta distribution with N dash and N dash. I will prove this at the end of this video. So if it has a beta distribution of n dash and n dash, the mean that you expect to have is 0 0.5. And this is what you will have if the null assumption is correct. So if your data is coming from a uniform distribution, you will get something that is close to 0 0.5 as we indeed saw here. But you could get theoretically a number close to zero. In practice, I don't think it's very easy to do the minimal number that I managed to get playing around was 0 0.1 and you can, could get numbers close to one. So as you saw here, we have 0 0.99, very close to one. Okay, so a little bit more information. There used to be some confusion about the exponentiating. You might have seen different versions, for example, where you don't exponentiate to the power of D, but this was wrong. Some authors mistakenly dropped it. You can read more about it in this paper over here. Will the real Hopkins statistics please stand up? It's relatively new. And here's a graph from the paper that shows the true beta distribution. In red, you see what happens when you don't exponentiate the distances. And in blue, you see what happens when you do. Here, the real dimension of the data was three. So they exponentiated to three and you see that it's much closer to the true distribution of beta. So this formula is only true if you do uh, take the distances to the power of the dimensionality. Another thing in this paper is that they mentioned some improvement that you can do, uh, uh, which is instead of calculating regular distances, you could use torus geometry where the edges are connected. 
So the assumption here is that there are additional points outside of the hypercube of the data. And in order to prevent edge effects, we can wrap the hypercube around it, its edges. So suppose, for example, that I have some point here, and the distance to the nearest point is this distance over here. But what if I have another point here? Then what happens with torus geometry is that I consider the distance from here to here. So I consider it as if it's wrapped. So this point is transferred here, and then the distance is this distance over here. And this could help with the accuracy of the statistic. Here you can see again in black the true distribution. In blue, you see the um, simple Hopkins statistic that the distances are calculated without the torus geometry. You see it's kind of off. If you use torus geometry, you see you get a much better result with the green. And both this graph and this graph are from simulations. Yeah, so, so you create new data and you sample new uh, subset of the data and you calculate the Hopkins statistics each time, and then you show the distribution of the Hopkins statistics. OK, I want to show you the code. So this is a code I wrote. You only need to use NumPy and the sklearn nearest neighbors algorithm. The function takes the data, um, some hyperparameters like the subsample size that you want to use. This is the n dash. I will take 0.1 times n to make it n dash. Here I, wrote, I called it m. And also some seed for reproducibility. So we are taking random samples from the data and sampling uniformly from the hypercube that encompasses the data. In order to get the same Hopkins statistics for the same data, we need to set some seed. And so this is the seed that we will set. OK, I calculate the length of the data, the dimensionality of the data, the n dash. Here I call it m. I set the seed, I call nearest neighbors, then I generate the use. So I draw uniformly from the hypercube that is stretched from the minimal x, so the x that has the least points, and the maximal x. OK, so maybe not hypercube, hyperrectangle. Yeah, so we, we create this box from the minimal point and the maximal point, and we draw samples from there. And then I calculate their distance to the closest neighbor in the data. Then I generate the Ws, where I take a random sample from the data itself. Here I create random indices of the data. Here I take the actual data. And again, I calculate the nearest neighbor in the data. But I take the second nearest because this is itself a data point. So the nearest neighbor will be 0. It will be itself. We'll have a distance of 0. So I take the second closest point, which will be uh, the actual point that is not itself. And these are the Ws. Here I exponentiate them, and I sum them, and I calculate the u divided by u plus w. And then I get h. So this is the simple algorithm without the torus geometry. And yeah, and using this function, I managed to calculate the values here for all these different datas.